This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Especially when you are sure it is the voice of God. When you are sure it is God that spoke to you, my brother, let it be final. Let every man be displeased. In the nearby future, if it is the voice of God, everybody will know. But if you are not sure it's God, see that no. If you are not sure that you have heard from God, just respect yourself. Just stay. Until you are sure. Until you find peace. Not false peace. There is peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It's like I want to carry this thing right now. I have strength, physical strength. But God said I shouldn't carry it. But because I have physical strength, I talk myself into it. You can, be, you can carry it. You can carry it. You can carry it. And then I start carrying Then it got broken. Have I carried this? I haven't. So one of the key things you look out for when God speaks is that his peace. His peace. His peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. His peace. You don't have peace. You're running with something you don't have peace about. You don't get peace. They run with that. That's you want to just go and ruin your life or what? You don't have peace. You like somebody coming right now to offer me a job. It will not work out. There are things I cannot do. Not because I don't want to do them, but because I don't have peace. God has not sent me there. God has not asked me to do that. You'll find benefit in his voice. Not in your agenda. Are you listening to God? Are you listening? Are you paying attention to what God is saying to you? Or you have just decided to do what you want to do? What do you want to do right now? Is the question. And why do you want to do it? And who are you trying to do it to show to them? God that's where people have problems most times. Maybe you have a shop. The next neighbor started selling biscuits and pepper. And the biscuit and pepper was moving. Ha! <clears throat> he just went and collected money and buy biscuit and pepper and fill the whole shop. Don't they compete? God didn't tell you to buy biscuit and pepper. Oh. Your customers that used to come say, why did she do that? Ah, it's only uh, rice and potato she's selling. Why is she adding biscuit and pepper to it? God didn't lead you to biscuit and pepper. That was how that business started struggling. If you're taking instructions from God, you'll be getting this kind of result. If you're taking instruction from people, you also get the people kind of result. It's taking instruction from God that makes the difference. Are you listening to God? Are you listening to God? These are the key things about life. Whether it's marriage, you want to marry. Whether it's a relationship, you have not heard the voice of God and you're running around the guy. You have not heard the voice of God. Because you can marry and break in one week. You can marry and the marriage end in two years. It's not just getting married, it's staying married. People spend a lot in wedding, they want to do wedding. But my wedding is the best, there is no best wedding. It's just I have advice for people. When you wed yourself, don't invite too many people. Keep it so confidential. And don't post pictures. You didn't hear what I said? I'm just teaching you something. I have one of my daughters, she's in Canada and she was getting married. I don't teach her many things. She only inbox me. Some people can see your wedding clothes, your on that wedding, they, they cause the marriage. They begin to attack you from there. They just bond you, bond baby, just carry and they show everybody. You think everybody's happy for you? There are things you keep to yourself. This is my life. This is my life. There are things you keep to yourself. There are things you don't shout about. Let wisdom come to your mind. 
Just engagement parties everywhere, everywhere. On Facebook, everywhere, people don't know they don't engage you. Just they don't like they don't have a start to they engage in you know, that show picture. What about the guy saying no go marry you again? What about the man saying no go marry you again? What do you do? You go back to change the delete the picture. Wisdom. 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 People didn't know that we were building until when we did that uh, that cutting of something. That was one of the first times. The only people that used to see the progress I'm making, so just three or four persons, just struck all my, my partners who just talk, say, men are fans, it's what I don't do, you know, like that. It was when we went home two weeks ago, I said, I'm going to shout and I'm going to invite one or two persons. That was why we didn't shout it. That's how we didn't get to know that we didn't know that we're building. People don't have a clue. Except people that live in the neighborhood and who come to church here. A lot of people that know me don't know what we're doing. Pastor C said something. Do big things and say nothing about them. That's growth. That's maturity. Every small biscuit you get, don't come for Facebook. Every small pepper way buy, Facebook. Every eat beans, Facebook. Some people show their food for Facebook. <laughs> See my food, my breakfast. You see, you're not thinking well. Not thinking well. Not thinking well. You're not helping yourself. You know, no, say scammers there for your page. You know, no. Today they were talking about how the major scam that happened, how these guys will come to people's website for two months and studying how. They are moving finances. Today we're just watching it. They just stay on that side. How they move money, who they move the money to, the bank they move it to, and then they begin to study it for over two to three months. Then the strategy for the hacking starts. That's how part of a major government was hacked 100 million USD. When you want to show, know what you want to show. Show wisdom. Show Jesus. Show the word of God. <laughs> Am I ministering today? Am I helping anybody here today? Yes. That's what my pastor told me. He said, do big things and say nothing about them. What they can't sell. How, how to live long. You want to prove to the other pastor to say you too do. <laughs> you know, so we did that. <laughs> now, because we never talk. God forbid, but we day inside Christ. Maybe that kind day of sun and block. Maybe that kind day of uh, Japanese idol. You know what I call Japanese idol? It's car now. Maybe that day we'll talk about. Maybe fiber. Now, gospel. Those are the things that should matter more to you. It should matter to you too. I'll tell somebody that if we are to be sharing testimonies of what God is doing in our ministry, if we say we are the person who say we like to write those kind thing them, you know those kind thing them now huh? so they tell everybody. There are testimonies you will hear. You say, Pastor, this is not true, but it's true. But it's true. The focus is Christ. Let's make him popular. Let's make, let, let him become our focus, our ministry, our goal. To tell people about Jesus. And stay out of the game of comparing yourself to others. Because doing that is putting yourself behind. It's not all the apostles that wrote book. Have you read about the book of Andrew? Who have read Gospel according to Andrew. Where is gospel according to Bartholomew? Where is gospel according to... Call, call the names. Matthias. Where is the book of Matthias? Matthias, 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 Matthias. <laughs> Where is the book of Matthias? 
It was not every one of them that wrote. And it was not every one of them that spoke much. In ministry, there are graces, strength, and giftings. And people don't know these things. Andrew brought Peter. And Peter spoke. Peter wrote. Peter said so many things. Look at Paul that came later. Wrote. Wrote. So many things. Did so many things. That was what he was called to do. Andrew did his part. There is a lad here. Somebody contributed. Somebody said something. And when you begin to understand these things, it will help you to become more effective, more productive, and more efficient. Why? Because you've understood your calling. You've understood your place. A man of God was sick in the hospital. His friend went to visit him. Was, he, went and, he went to visit his friend, church and saw what God was doing. That was how he became sick. They took him to the hospital. And when one man of God came to visit, he said, look at that. Well, are we not all that seven minutes together? Look at, look at, look at my life. Hey! Hey! Until he started having health crisis. Jealousy and envy are monster. When people are doing well, go support them. Pray for them. Love on them. Don't be behind them and be gossiping and talking rubbish. That won't benefit you. If God has given it to them, you can't take it from their hands. See, you cannot be able, you won't be able to take out from a man's hand or a woman's hand what God has given to them. You may fight them, but you cannot take it. It is giving, it is giving. Pastor, he used to tell me something many years ago. He said, if your conscience can be broken, but if your blessings cannot be reversed. <laughs> if somebody is cursed, it can be broken. If somebody is blessed, it cannot be reversed. He said, how? Check the scripture. Isaac said, I cannot, I can't change it. I've already blessed him. I've already blessed him. But, but eventually, you never you go walk out until something go finally break free from your own struggle and then your life will be better. Not that I will take what I've given to him and not give to you. It's not going to work that way. If you're listening to God, you'll be taking steps that will glorify him. If you're listening to God, You'll be taking steps. You compare your marriage to this person. You compare your husband to these people. You compare your wife. What are you doing? Didn't you see them before you go and marry them? Didn't you see them? Didn't you see them? You saw them. You saw the way they are. <laughs> this is my wife's self. It's no more latest. <laughs> this is my husband. is no more latest. He's not uh, appearing like a latest man. Eh? Which one be latest man? Every human being has a problem. People have their issues. They may wear Gucci, they may wear cancer, you don't know them. You don't know them. Sometimes you see people, they live a, a flashy life, they live, you don't know them. You don't know them. You are just looking at them, you don't know them. You wish you know them, you don't know them. There are people, they look good, they look okay, but you can't stay with them. They are violent. Their wife beat us. They can mess you up. The money they have drives them. You don't know them. You can't just stand there. Hey, now that one, why I like where, where? Why do you say like him? Why do you say like him? You know him. You know the person. You know what I know to go to a person. God cut your head. Go do something. <laughs> He don't know them. He don't know. He don't know them. He don't know them. Sometimes there is how God orders your life. There is how God orders. There are people that God brings into your life. They may not have everything, though. Know, but somehow they will help you to fulfill your purpose. Somehow they will help you. And say, ah, but this man then a problem man, but manager problem. But because the other one, eh, no problem when getting get debt. There are certain things, there are certain suffering. No suffering of poverty, you will suffer in life. There are certain sufferings in marriage. 
There are certain sufferings in marriage. He said, if I know so that I said that will not marry you, because you don't marry already now, so you go stay there. There are things to deal with. No human being has 100% complete content. No human being. And most of us, we are judges. We like everything is perfect. What? Nobody. Nobody. You cannot let somebody that is maturing, that is growing. Maybe you used to be angry a lot, but gradually, by the word of God, you don't they come down small, small. There are people that don't like to talk. Talk, Kwani. Ah, talk now. Those are big talk. There are women like that. There are men like that. So you start praying for them that God should open them up. Because, because before they become like that, something happened to them. Something happened to them. You notice a man is just quiet. He doesn't talk. It's not normal. Notice a woman doesn't just talk. Just stay. Just lock. Just stay. You do like this. Okay. You do like okay. It's not okay. Talk. Say something. You start praying for the person. Something is happening to them. And that that is happening to them, sometimes they don't see you fit to discuss their pain with. Be a kind of person that people can discuss their crime with you. Now, people, somebody can be free to tell you, you see, eh? since yesterday, my leg, they pain me. Hey! You are not in the spirit. Hey! You are starting by sliding. Hey, Holy Ghost, Lord, don't let me hear that. That's why people won't talk to you. Why did the woman of Samaria, him and Jesus, Jesus stood there and was talking to her. Many of them are not going to talk to that woman. Many of them, some of them. I know, no, no. Church people. This one. <laughs> She's not too holy. <laughs> sing the smell. Sing, sing. It's smelling here. Sing. <laughs> sing. See righteousness. So sometimes people can come to you and tell you what they are struggling with because they are afraid of what you do to them. You should be a kind of person that people can just be relaxed and see you. Yesterday, she took. Yesterday, I fall and my leg, they pay me. My legs, they hang for that three or four. Then you can minister to them. And that was why we have not received the ministry of condemnation. We have received the ministry of reconciliation. God not call you to condemn people. Not be your job with that one. Condemning people doesn't mean you're preaching effectively. That's why there are people that are there for Facebook that they go. That's why they see them and they scroll past. I don't get anything to do with them. Because as they start, they will be pouring you the condemnation from beginning to the end. Now, me want to that condemnation. I look like that kind of person. I don't read my Bible where now. I don't read my Bible. Eh? I don't read my Bible. Eh? I know what to receive. I know who to receive from. Ministering to the saints, condemnation is not included. Even when people miss it, you bring that correction in love. The qualification for correction is that it's coming from the spirit of love. You don't come and disgrace people. And then you say you're doing leadership. What kind of leadership you don't? You don't disgrace people. You don't abuse them and disgrace them. No, you don't do that. You minister in love. Correction. And it's not everybody that is qualified for correction. No. Yes, sir. There are people that need to correct them. They will correct themselves. There are some of those who say, that's what we don't want me to do. Me give. No, don't next time. You, you hear me? Okay. Now, I know what are they for? You know, pass me, what are they for? When Tweet was banned in Nigeria, a few days later, my pastor called me and said, how are you doing? I hope you're not affected. I said, no, pastor. This and this happened in October. I was told to move some things out from this platform and this and that and that. Okay, no problem. I said, let me call you to see how you're faring with the whole situation. Because there is how you are, you, are, you, can, you can be assessed. 
See, there is how you'll be here, even when God is speaking to people to come and reach you, don't fit. Because you, get, you don't build things, wall. Don't be a kind of believer, you have walls. You don't wall yourself. It's like, even when they die, nobody will come help you. Because you don't build walls. Be a kind of person that you can easily flow. Even if you felt that you know more than this person, you know more than everybody, eh? just pretend that you don't know. It makes people to reach out to you. It's part of being flexible to hear the voice of God. To hear the voice of God, you need to be flexible. You cannot just say, I know ev- I don't know everything. How can I know everything? You learn from everybody. You either learn what to do or what not to do. You learn from everybody. So you cannot have a ministry of condemning. You should be gracious in your ministry. You should be gracious in ministering to people. And let me say this to you. When God is working on people, it takes time. Yes. It takes time. When God is working on people. There are Christians that are struggling with masturbation. There are Christians that are struggling with drugs. There are Christians that are struggling with alcohol. There are Christians that are struggling with bitterness. Bitterness. You know, in church, we don't talk about bitterness. We don't talk about uh, malice. There are Christians that don't greet each other. They come to church. Your brother, pass. Psh, you pass. I said, what kind of church people are this? <laughs> what kind of believers are this? You don't greet, you're keeping malice. Both of you want to go to heaven. Which of the heaven? You keep malice, you don't greet. She was, I think, she just let me the other way, come back. Our neighbor, for sometimes, the man is making his face. Because one day we'll charge him up. He used to come and block our gate. And we'll say, bros, don't do that again. Because our cars fell into the gutter twice. So after that situation, when he see me, he doesn't greet me. So the other day we're coming back. I saw him sitting down. And now wind my glass and Neighbor! Neighbor! <laughs> she was there, she was laughing. Never! Pastor. <laughs> At least that malice, I'm not for your malice level. <laughs> At least I'm taking, I'm taking, that malice where won't keep me. I'm not for that level. That malice, I know, how did they keep malice? So you don't understand. So now with the flow, how are you? Let's see, I drive past, nothing again. Just that money would drop past. I can't get what I'm saying right now. So you not come to church. A brother, a sister, you see your brother, he greeted you, you pass. What kind of thing are you doing? I thought we were one family. You should be, I don't want to greet her because the last time when they do anniversary, when they share rice, my rice, now in Karan, go give somebody. What's going to happen for the anniversary? As soon as the pastor comes, some people their mind never come at you today. Some people even left church because of the anniversary. God will find that the, my rice. The way, the way they shot the thing, it now came to my tongue. The way they gave me the cake. If you see the kind of cake when they give me, I won't collect cake. Now, so they just shot. Say, the cake not for you. Now, for pastor cake. Now, pastor cake. <laughs> uh, uh, since, since then, the battle is still. No, oh, no, 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 no. Lay aside. What? Completely for me, my people. Every word that easily besets you, lay it aside. They, they gossip about you, lay it aside. Free yourself. I swear your prayers will be answered. You cannot be praying with unforgiveness. You cannot. You cannot. Your prayer is answered on several conditions. A pure heart. A clean hand. Those are the questions. You must, you must be there. So if you're keeping on uh, bitterness, unforgiveness... If you're lifting up your voice, you're not praying. Until you go and resolve that matter. That was why Jesus said, if you're bringing something to the offering, and you notice you have a problem with your brother, you go back home and resolve it. You know, that's not part of what we preach now. But it's the gospel. Why? You offer with a clean heart. You can't keep malice. You can despise people. You can't keep malice. It's not Christian faith. If you're listening to God, you'll be attending to your heart. If you're listening to God, something happened between your, uh, your family, between you and your wife. Sometimes you're right, or your wife is wrong. Just to say, I'm sorry, you. 
Sorry. Because marriage is to forgive us living together. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hmm. Me, I need to tell somebody sorry. Me. <laughs> I need it. People, they bow for me. Hey, iron lady. Me, some men are like that. Me, I'm an iron man. Nobody, me, nobody. Ah, why are you doing that? Blessed are the merciful. Ah. <laughs> These are the tools. These are the keys. This is why people are praying and it's not reaching anywhere. Because right inside their heart, there is so many things going on. And God is saying, I don't like this. I don't like this. Have people hurted me? Yes. You can't pastor for three months and not be hurted. You can't pastor for one year and not have reason to be offended. No, no, no. They will hurt you. People you even love on them, help them and do things for them, can go behind you and say, my rubbish. Say things that are not true. Some people say things to have favor. But I want to say this to you as a member of this local church. Never say something that is not true. And never say something you have not verified. It is maturity to verify before you speak. It is maturity to know before you speak. It is also maturity to understand before you communicate. Don't just say, uh, not so they do. How do you know so they do? There are people that don't follow people up. They don't visit people. And you want people to visit you out. Have you shown it? Who have you gone to visit? Gone to and visit the person and encourage the person. Without pouring pepper and salt and maggi mixing it and pouring the person's side. You go and visit to love. Are you listening to the voice of God? And when you do the things that God called you to do in love, it prospers. It does what? It prospers. If God called you to do something, you do it in love. And let me say this to God is about to promote you, but he's watching what you're doing with this season. He's about to promote you. He's about to promote you. Abraham listened to God. He got to a point, as I conclude now, he got to a point when he tied his hand, his leg of Isaac, and the voice of the Lord. He lifted up his knife. And he wanted to come down. The voice of God came to him and said, don't touch him. Don't touch him. There is a ram in the ticket. God has provision when you are in the place of obedience. He has provision. He has provision when you are in the place of obedience. Be a kind of person that you are quick to forgive. You are quick to flow. Papa Hagen said something. Be quick to repent. Be quick to believe. Be quick to repent. Be quick to believe. Be quick to forgive. Some people can forgive easily. And it's hindering the flow of the anointing in your life. Come forgive. That also gives me concern when a pastor keeps malice. Now, there are, there are conditions to just relate to people and not have a relationship with them deeply because of either you cannot stand them or the crisis they could create for you. But that's social greeting. How are you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's normal for everybody. Because relationship is a choice. Relationship is a choice. If somebody keep hurting you, keep hurting you, everything keep hurting you, the only way you can love them, you can also love them from afar. You can greet them. But know that you want to have a relationship with them as you don't have more issues. There is nothing wrong in loving somebody from afar. Especially if that relationship has a potential to sabotage your peace. To sabotage your faith. So I can love you from afar. To, to create peace. That if every time we meet to we'll fight, every time we meet to we'll fight, it's a sign that we're not supposed to be together. Yes, it's true. Every time we we'll meet, now one quarter, one quarter, now one kind crisis. And I see some people have friends like that. Their friend will just connect me, quarter don't start. <laughs> fight. Ah. Which kind of friendship is that one? Man, I need peace, I beg. So that kind of friendship will not send back. Mba no. Well, I will love you from afar. I love you, but from afar. As we can have peace. Because in peace, you make progress. And I'm here tonight to say to you, 
If you keep listening to God, you will get to your destination on time. If you keep listening to God, and tomorrow I will follow up this message, I will do the part two of this message tomorrow, and on Thursday,